A new piece in Foreign Affairs details one reason why Ukraine has been able to hold out and why technology will define the future of geopolitics. It reads in part, outgunned and outmanned, Ukraine turned to one area in which it held an advantage over the enemy, technology. Shortly after the invasion, the Ukrainian government uploaded all of its critical data to the cloud so that it could safeguard information and keep functioning, even if Russian missiles turned its ministerial offices into rubble. When Russia sent Iranian-made drones across the border, Ukraine acquired its own drones specifically designed to intercept their attacks, while its military learned how to use unfamiliar weapons supplied by Western allies. In the cat-and-mouse game of innovation, Ukraine simply proved nimbler. And so what Russia had imagined would be a quick and easy invasion has turned out to be anything but. With us now, the author of that piece, former Google CEO and chairman Eric Schmidt. He's the author of the book, The Age of AI and Our Human Future. Eric, thanks so much for being with us. You know, we're about to come up on the 20-year uh, mark of the beginning of the Iraq War. I'm curious, how much has warfare changed over the past 20 years because of technology? Um, it's going to change a great deal more. Um, the biggest change is going to be the arrival of autonomy, and that essentially translates into drones. If I were a soldier, I'd want 50 drones ahead of me, right, looking out, defending me, attacking. And most of the military techniques on the Ukrainian side seem to be clever. They're in and out, sh use HIMARS and shoot something, or they are um, send a drone over and go behind enemy lines to take them out from the rear. These are technologies that were not available in the past and certainly not available to the Russians. So, Eric, so talk to us a little bit more about some of the stuff that Ukraine's been using. They've used satellites, right? They've used uh, the Starlink satellites powered and provided by uh, SpaceX to stay connected. Um, they've also done a remarkably good job. U.S. officials have been surprised at their level of success, warding off Russian cyber attacks, yes. which many thought would be at the forefront of their invasion. Everybody assumed that Russia would destroy their cyber infrastructure, and Russia tried. But the Ukrainians, with some American companies' help, managed to hold it off. And the arrival of the Starlinks made a huge difference. This is the first broadband war. This is a war where citizens could take a picture of a tank and have, be, have it AI targeted, and then a different group makes a targeting decision and actually takes the tank out. That's how the first month of the war was won in Kyiv, uh, in addition to all the courage of the Ukrainians. And will technology also help Ukraine, whenever this war comes to an end, help move on, rebuild, with, because they've been able to use technology to store so much of, 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 of their government uh, uh, you know, from Russian attack? They're going to have a heck of a lot of technology companies by the time they're done, because what's happening is that the entrepreneurs, who, by the way, are not allowed to leave the country anyway, are busy building the, com the com companies that will actually power the new generation of military technology, mostly drones, mostly autonomous, both land and sea. So how are, shifting to what sides think might be a future Cold War, tell us, explain how technology is playing a role right now for, between the U.S. and China and its sort of rivalry and, and a potential standoff down the road. Well, I wish I could tell you otherwise, but at the moment, I think the greatest innovator globally is China, not the United States. It's a terrible answer. But the fact of the matter is China produces four to five times more STEM graduates and is very, very capitalist in the way it approaches these things. They dominate now, for example, in new energy, all the new batteries and so forth that you use. They think about it, they're probably going to dominate in cars. Um, they already dominate in financial services. They're, they're tr trying to compete with us in AI, quantum, and synthetic biology. What the government did, which was really good, is it passed a, a bill poorly named USICA, also known as the CHIPS Act, which helped us with a lot of science funding and so forth. Um, the American model is different. The American model is the universities invent stuff, um, capital at risk funds it, and the government helps make the market happen and regulate it. That triad, when it works, is exceptional. Look at Operation Warp Speed and how well it worked. We've got to get back to building these things at scale, or the Chinese will basically beat us. So, Eric, let's talk about the tech gap and just how, how critical it's been, not only in this war, but in future wars as well. We, we've, we've heard stories of of uh, generals being killed because they took out a cell phone, just a crude right. cell phone to call back home. Other people, uh, other Russians have done the same thing where they're not equipped with advanced, uh, advanced technology and they give up their locations time and time again. 
with the brain drain that is 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 happening in in Russia and has happened since the start of the war. Doesn't that technology gap between Russia and Ukraine only increase? Um, it does, so long as Russia does not become reliant on the Chinese and Iranian technologists, uh, who are very, very good. So we've got to get, do a bunch of stuff. We've got to make sure that these smart people leave their countries and come, and we give them visas and keep them in the United States, right, to start the companies and so forth. We've also got to remember that there's no place to hide anymore. There's too many satellites, too many people watching. You can't hide your aircraft carriers and so forth. New forms of war and combat will be quick, in and out, hidden, surprise, and so forth. Um, the ultimate war will be the following. You know, imagine a war between China and the United States, oh, sorry, uh, North Korea and the United States. North Korea attacks, the United States defends. China decides it's a bad idea. The whole war occurs in about five milliseconds because it's a cyber war. The real problem is these things are going to happen so fast. We're going to have to have automatic weapon systems. They're going to have to figure out what to do because the war happens faster than humans can decide. So, Eric, as we close, I, I just want to circle back to something you, you referenced uh, in your last, last answer. Can you talk about how critically important it is that Congress gets their act together and figures out a way to make sure that the best and the brightest that come to America uh, to get advanced degrees don't have to go back to China, don't have to go back to India, but we actually have immigration reform that keeps them here so they're starting new businesses in North Carolina instead of New Delhi. This is such an easy argument. If you look at the, we studied this very carefully, the top, top papers in AI, which I work on a lot, often have a Chinese author, one of five or one of 10. Those people in, are in America. We should give each and every one of them a great place in the United States and a visa and an ability to stay here. We do not want them going back to China with the things they learned in America to compete with us. That's insane. It is completely insane. Former Google CEO and Chairman Eric Schmidt, thank you very much for being on the show. It's fascinating. Thank you so much, Eric. We really appreciate thank it. And thank on the you topic all. of you.